Hello everyone, welcome to another video. In this video, I'll be talking to you about BGP session authentication. We're going to look at how BGP session authentication works, why we need BGP session authentication, how it's configured, and we'll look at packet capture in more detail in Wireshark. So the first question is why? Why do we need BGP session authentication? The reason is to protect against spoofing attacks, or more accurately, to protect against the introduction of spoofed TCP segments in a BGP connection stream. So how does this work? Every single segment sent between the BGP pairs contains an MD5 digest. This MD5 digest is calculated by applying the MD5 algorithm on these different fields. So you have the source and destination IP, the segment length protocol number, your TCP header excluding the options, TCP segment data, if any, and also very importantly, the password value. This password value is what you configure on your switch and is known to only both BGP speakers. Now, in terms of configuration, it's very straightforward. So this is an example from a, an Arista or a Cisco device. You have a neighbor and they specify um, the IP address or the pair group, and then you configure a password. In this case, the password configured is Cisco. Now let's look at Wireshark to see how BGP uses MD5 and passwords to secure a particular BGP session. So this is an example of a packet capture. Now I captured this packet from the point of session establishment all the way to actually exchanging update messages and keep alive messages. And if you watch my previous videos, you'd realize that um, in order to form a BGP session, you need to have a TCP um, session established to port 179. In this case, the client is 13.2 and then the server is this switch 13.1. A SIM packet has been sent. And if you look at within that SIM packet and you look at the options, this is the TCP options, you would actually see this TCP MD5 signature. This is the MD5 digest that gets calculated using information from your TCP headers, such as your sequence numbers or acknowledgement numbers, source port destination port. It also uses IP address information and also the password that you have configured for this particular pair. And that is used to calculate the MD5 digest. Now, if you look at the CNAC, you would also see an MD5 digest calculated using similar information. But remember, your acknowledgement number doesn't stay the same. So your MD5 digest and your sequence number as well doesn't stay the same. So this means that your MD5 digest will always be different. Anyway, so you have your CNAC and you see the MD5 digest as well attached to every single segment. Even your final acknowledgement to complete your three-way handshake has an MD5 digest appended to it. And then after your TCP three-way handshake is complete, you send your open message. So both pairs need to send open messages. You see an MD5 digest as well. We also have an open message from 13.1 to 13.2. You also see the MD5 digest. So throughout the process up until the exchange of open messages and you know having a completely established BGP session, you're always going to have your MD5 digest sent, right? Even your keeper lives, you have your MD5 digest. So this is how you actually seek your BGP sessions using passwords and using the MD5 algorithm. The important thing to remember here is every single segment gets authenticated using the MD5 algorithm. And the MD5 digest that gets calculated is calculated using information in the TCP headers, the IP headers, and also using the password that you've configured on both sides of the BGP session. So I hope this video was useful for you. I'd like to thank you for listening and join me in the next video.